back everyone, it's Sylvia from Aussie Scrapper. I made this layout for the Scrap the Boys challenge and the June challenge was in stitches and basically all you had to do was include stitches on your layout, either hand stitching or machine stitching. So the first thing I did was I went through my stash of papers and I found these beautiful papers from my mind's eye and they're going back to 2013. Can you believe that? But anyway, I've even got older papers than that. And I also incorporated them with the Coco Vanilla 2016 Totally Rad collection. I wanted to match my photo with some orange paper just to make it pop. And of course, I had no orange paper in my stash. All I had was this little uh, scrap of paper from the um, Totally Rad collection and I just made it work. I cut four strips of about one centimetre and um, yeah, just pieced it all together and it looks great. And there's my photo. You can't really tell that it's just all put together with um, scraps of paper, can you? I must apologise for my absence in the last month. The reason was due to the fact that at the very last minute, and it was a very quick decision, it was decided that my scrap room, which was the smallest room in the house, was going to change to the larger room in the house. My son decided that he couldn't keep the big bedroom clean and that's why it was always messy and I was always nagging him. So he said he wanted my scrapbooking room, which is also the office, as his room. So it has taken me a month to move out of my old room and into my new one and get my son settled into a smaller bedroom. Okay, let's get back to this layout. So I'm going to be using the My Mind's Eye Boy Crazy collection that I showed you earlier. And I'm just, what I did first was I cut the chevron paper, the blue chevron paper, just to, oh, I guess it was more like a square shape or, well, not really quite a square shape, but anyway. And then the other side of that chevron paper is that lovely sort of circly pattern that you see there or the colourful browns and oranges and there's a, um, some teal in there as well coordinated lovely so I just trim a oh a couple of millimeters of both sides of or oh, two sides of this lovely paper and I match it onto some brown cardstock and that just made everything pop and of course I had to ink the edges of my paper because I don't like seeing those raw white edges and this time around I used my Distress inks in and the colour was Dried Marigold. I am using double sided tape to put all my papers down and uh, adhere them into place. I am contemplating buying an ATG gun and uh, hopefully that will make things a little bit quicker. At this stage, I thought that I needed another layer of paper between my photo and that chevron paper. And I thought that I was going to use this white piece of paper, but it was just a little bit too bright for my liking. So I went through my stash and to see what I could find. And I found this piece of strange looking, I don't even know what that is. But um, I thought, oh, I can make a love hat out of this. But then I decided that it was just too red and... It really didn't look right, but it did give me the inspiration to draw a love heart on some brown paper and cut it out. I did go looking through my stash for some beige coloured paper and I did have a few, but they were just not the right shade and it just didn't look right. The tone was off. There was something not quite right with what was in my stash. So instead of going out and trying to find the right thing at the shops, I just made my own. I pulled out my Distress Oxides in Antique Linen and I'm just using that to uh, create my own background paper. Here is my hand-drawn love heart and yeah, it's not a perfect love heart but I actually quite like the fact that it's a bit wonky, it's hand-drawn and yeah, I think it adds character to the page. I will now be committing to these layers, so I'm just going to ink my chevron paper with more of that dried marigold Distress ink just to tie it in with the 
with the other colourful page and I also ink my homemade background paper. Off camera I adhered all my papers down. So I'm now working on, well this layout doesn't really have a title but I found these orange letter stickers in my stash and I've got no idea what collection they're from or where they're from, they're just really old, I've had them for a while. And I'm just sticking them down to some of that chevron paper and then I fussy cut around them just to give it a bit of an offset effect. And this is a close up of what it looks like. My stitching, which is part of the challenge, is going to be my journaling. With a pencil, I'm just lightly writing what I want to say in my journaling just to make sure that it fits. Once I worked out what I was going to say, I went back and on some scrap paper or that blue paper that you see there, I just made a template of my journaling that I was going to stitch. In my journaling, I will be using some of these lovely letters from Remarks. The letters are called Pelican and I just used them just to, for some of the words to make everything fit into the layout. So for words like my, me, and things like that that I didn't really want to hand stitch, I just used those uh, little tile letters. I then got a piece of scrap white paper and I rewrote my journaling and then I proceeded to poke little holes through all these words so that I could stitch it. From my stash I found some orangey embroidery floss and I was just showing you that the embroidery floss comes with six strands and I'm just going to use two strands as six would have been a bit too thick. And there's all my pierced holes into my thing. So I'm just going to show you for people that don't know how to do some back stitching. You just put your thread through your first little hole there and then once you're at the front you put it through the second hole and you pull the needle there's your first stitch then you go back to your third hole which is at the back and you come out to there and then you when you're back at the front there you get your needle and you pierce it back through that other stitch that's why it's called a back stitch and you just keep doing this and repeating the process so you go back to the back you go into the next hole, pierce the needle through, and then you work backwards into the other hole. And you got your back stitch. And I did this for all my words, and there you have it. So then, of course, I had to cut out each individual letter, or no, not letter, sorry, each individual word. All that hand stitching took a very long time. I don't know what I was thinking when the idea came into my head. I'm just using my Dove blending pen just to ink around all my words. I didn't like the white cardstock that I'd um, hand stitched everything onto, so I'm just picking up some ink with my with my um, Dove pen, which, which is a blending pen, and just colouring all around the words. And the colour I'm using, of course, is antique linen in the Dispress Oxides. I'm just using the Memento in grey flannel just to ink around my photo. All the ephemera that I'm going to be using around my photo is from the Cocoa Vanilla Totally Red collection and I love that little film strip paper and that does go there, that becomes its permanent home. The orange little piece of paper that's at the bottom there with the arrow, uh, it just says true story and it's pointing towards the journaling. I quite like that so that also stays there. I did try to get the flare buttons somewhere on this layout, but they don't make it. It just um, looked a bit too bulky. I wanted to do something with my love heart, and I wasn't sure quite. So after pondering the situation for a little while, I decided that I would go into my stash, and I found that I had some orange eyelets. So I, I'm now just going to be placing them out, just making sure that I had enough of them. And yes, I did, just enough. I've used up all my orange eyelets. So that's one thing gone from my stash. Once I was happy with the placement of all my little eyelets, I got out my silent setter, I think that was what it was called. 
and I just use that to pierce a hole through all my layers of paper which I had to actually press quite hard but I got there and once my little hole was done for that little eyelet I would put the eyelet in a little little glass jar that I have there just so I wouldn't lose it and I proceeded to make a hole where every single little eyelet was and here are all my holes ready for the eyelets to be put in place I just pushed my eyelet through that little hole, turn it around and press down on it so that it catches on all those layers of paper. And there's the first eyelet done. All my eyelets are now in and I'm playing with some of the ephemera from the Totally Rad collection from um, Cocoa Vanilla. And I found this lovely little oh, robot in orange and I thought, yes, that is definitely going down. And I quite like how that looks there. So here's a close-up of the eyelets all pieced through and that's another layout completed. Here's a close-up of all my hand stitching which I won't be doing in a hurry anytime soon. So once again thank you everyone for supporting this small channel of mine. Take care of yourselves and till my next layout I hope you all are well.